That's right. And my name is Neil Kimbrose. We've, uh, we've talked about, uh, or at least we hope we've talked about Afghanistan on the way ahead, and we've talked about war, we've talked about politics, we've talked about uh, tribal uh, relations and international relations, but we haven't said anything about uh, economic development. And without economic development, arguably, the situation just continues to continue. Could we have some idea of the prospects for economic development uh, in Afghanistan in the years ahead? Yeah, I think, thank you very much. I, it was part of my, you know, this long intervention, but I never reached that economic development because, you know, uh, we people engage in foreign policy and so much and driven by this stability and security and all that stuff that, 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 that we, we keep economics at the end. Uh, yes, I think that's uh, that's the uh, when I mentioned about the three policies of how to go forward. Uh, I a little bit touch on the, on the economic development side. Um, for us, we understand that right now the World Bank is doing this study, which one part is over. Uh, what would be the impact of transition? People are looking at impact. You know, I touched the bill and, and others they touched on the uh, uh, probably the, the security impact of transition as well as the political impact of transition. But, but, but we have to be very mindful of the economic impact. In Afghanistan, because today billions of dollars poured into Afghanistan, and it, it somehow it gets into that, not all of it, but you know, some person of page of that gets into the Afghan local economy, and that's how it keeps the country float. You know, we have uh, our dollar, I mean, our Afghani uh, currency, or Afghani, coincidentally, right? Like, we are Afghani currency, uh, is now 50 Afghani to one dollar, it's higher than the Japanese. <coughs> And that's unrealistic because you know it's much higher than you know, so I think it's 548 uh, Pakistani Taldar to one dollar, and ours is 50. I mean it, it's it's nonsense. I mean it doesn't make any any, any sense economically. It's because all the money is poured into our system, and then our central bank every two weeks you know the auctions and dollars, and then that's how we float the uh, the currency. Indeed. It's very important, but we have had you know. Good discussions on, on how we are looking forward to this economic development in Afghanistan and how we can sustain, first of all, how we can create, if I may call it, you know, economic soft landing for, for, the, for the transition or for the withdrawal of, of, of billions of dollars out of Afghanistan, which now is spent on, on the military. Because, you know, the Afghan people are the one in there, the you know, factors are using this, people are selling, you know, the, the, the materials in the market. Everyone gets, you know, some or the other way part of the, this month. Uh, we have had this, uh, these discussions and, and the two things that we have come forward and why again, I'm going back to Paul again and again because he's a philosopher and you know, when he gives, yeah. when he gives, when he gives four lines, it, you know, it, it has, you can write a book about it. It's the original cooperation. We think that Afghanistan is the heart of Asia and now there's a process actually which we have a next uh, meeting of it this month, uh, in month of June in, in Kabul. It started in Istanbul which is called the heart of Asia process. And that process involves the original economic cooperation between South Asia and Central Asia, that was Iraq, Turkey, and, and Europe, going through Afghanistan. So that, this is one way that we are hoping that the countries in the region and all of that, we come to our senses that, you know, this is, this is 21st century, and this is the time of economic interdependency and economic cooperation. So if China is a good example, we can call it, it's in our neighborhood, and we can follow, follow that. And India is booming, India is, uh, developing and we can make use of that. We can make best use of that, both Afghanistan and Pakistan. Letting you know Indian uh, trade go through to both countries, there are some statistics that, that probably both countries will benefit between five billion to seven billion dollars each year from that. And the other thing is the trade from the other side, you know, because South Asia is is a, an energy uh, uh, let's say thirsty region. And Central Asia is a, a, a supply region, which is a lot of energy, especially in summer where the load shedding and those things happen in the south, and that's what you, know, you need in Pakistan and India. There's a lot of hydropower uh, 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 capacity in the north of Afghanistan, also in countries like Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. And in the summer, because we have different seasons for electricity, we need more electricity in winter because it's cold. In summer, we don't need much, but it, it, there's a lot of demand for us down in the south. So we are working on that to get both the, the gas and uh, oil from Turkmenistan into Pakistan and India, and also electricity from Pakistan and Kyrgyzstan. So this is another way we are looking into Afghanistan, you know, benefiting both 
from the transit as well as from you know from this uh, boom in the in the uh, energy trade. But the very important part which we are banking on, and that's why we have you know a uh, 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 pledge in NATO conference in Chicago, 500 million dollars. I mean we are pledging to our own army, but that's the biggest chance after the United States. Afghanistan is. Uh, are contributing the biggest and what's 500 million dollar a year and this and this share will increase gradually and the share of the other countries like Australia and UK and the others will gradually decrease and we are banking on our mineral pool. We have had you know the recent uh, US geological survey is telling us it's 1.5 trillion dollar worth of resources in Afghanistan with, with this kind of assessment that we have and that's a, that's a very cautious and modest uh, uh, probably forecast. Uh, and then the, the, the major uh, the major item is lithium, which is needed in, in, in industrial future. So that's that's what we call the metal of the metal of future. And, and, and we are we are very you know uh, uh, cognizant of this fact that that will probably you know move Afghanistan to to a different uh, to a different stage of economic development. Given we already have a, a five billion dollar uh, project uh, signed already with China, and they're working on the copper in the south and. The, Production will stop in 2013, late 2013, 2014, which locks Chinese into Afghanistan. And for us, you know, as an, again, I may call myself economics, this liberal economic theory of interdependency, if Chinese has a stake in Afghanistan, they must have also a stake in the stability of their country. India has invested together with, with, uh, with Canada uh, $6.5 billion in iron ore. And now we are seeking, you know, uh, again, Chinese uh, investment in the north of Afghanistan. I have talked to a couple of uh, Australian companies in Perth. They are ready to go and invest in, in gold mining and in this lithium and uranium and all that stuff in Afghanistan itself. And, the, and there were different you know, companies coming in. And with this also comes you know, the rail links. We built our first rail links after 100 years of pause. Because our king in 100 years back, he thought it was not a good idea to build a rail link because of the Soviet uh, uh, Empire. The Tsarist will use it to get into the British India. And even from that side, we were scared that maybe the British they will use it to go to the other side. So we stop it for 100 years, and after 100 years, we understand that we made a mistake, and we stop it. <laughs> so, and that's the first part of the first. And I think these are, these are, the, these are the, the major things. Of course, our agriculture, we're working on agriculture again, and I'm working in you know, a different institution here on dry land farming. Afghanistan, as you know, uh, it has that kind of uh, uh, geography, and we think Australia can support that. So there are different economic policies on the ground uh, for which we are seeking uh, international support as well as regional support in an international conference in Tokyo in the month of, in the month of uh, July. And, and on that, and I see a lot of movement, you know, in, uh, Ambassador a little bit touched on India-Pakistan calling the relationship, especially, you know, in, in terms of uh, uh, working this, this commercial relations, you know, the MFN status. And, and, and there are, you know, we have this Afghan-Pakistan trade and transit agreement uh, after, which is now working, and we are seeking into, you know, extending after beyond to Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. So that way, I think we have to bring more interdependencies, you know, more economic interdependencies in these two countries, between the people of those two countries, where the politicians will not be able to inspire. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you know, very interesting.